Hello, I welcome you all to my next class, 15th century part 2. Now you must be thinking 15th century part 2? Yes, we have already taken the English poetry. That is, in 15th century we had English poetry and Scottish poetry. So we already did English poetry and today we will be taking Scottish poetry. And what is present in the Scottish poetry, how important it was, how important writers were there. So please, I again request you to jot down all important points and don't forget to subscribe my channel. So moving forward, let's see. Now we see the introduction to Scottish poetry. The period revolves round from the blank period of English poetry to the Scottish poetry as I already told you that no great poet was born in the English period and so there were only few minor poets. Right. Now in the Scottish poetry uh, we say na, the table turns and we have uh, good poets in this era. So 15th century is said to be the most distinguished period of Scottish poetry. It is said to be the most distinguished. Do not forget that in the, uh, for uh, Scottish poetry, this was the distinguished period. Now this era of Scottish poetry began with the work of John Barber, who was a contemporary of Chaucer. Yes, now the, uh, the Scottish poetry begins with an era and with the poetry of John Barber and he was the contemporary of Chaucer. Do not forget John Barber. He is important. Now uh, in this PPT we are going to be uh, going to take these poets like John Barber, Robert Henryson, William Dunbar and Gwan Douglas. Right. So, without wasting time, let's see John Barber. Now, when we talk about John Barber, he wrote a poem called The Bruce. And it was an enthusiastic poem with octosyllabic lines. Jab bhi hum koi poem ke baare mein baat karte hai, to please don't forget ki uski lines kaisi thi, octosyllabic thi. Kaisi poem thi, it was an enthusiastic poem. And what it is based on? So it was based on the adventures of Robert Bruce, the hero of the Scottish War of Independence. Jo uska main hero hai, wo Robert Bruce hai, Scottish War of Independence ke time ka. Right? Ab isme John Barber ka jo motive hai is poem ka, that was partly historical and partially patriotic. जो ये पोयम होती है, the poem opens with a description of जब ये पोयम ओपन होती है, तो एक डिस्क्रिप्शन है of the state of Scotland और वो किस बात पे डिस्क्राइब कर रहा है? It is describing on the death of Alexander III and it concludes with the death of Douglas, right? So in the starting, there is a description of the state of Scotland at the death of Alexander III and the concluding part hai, there is a death of Douglas. So, do not forget this point and Bruce is important. And you don't need to read it more than that. Right? Now, Henry, who we call Blind Harry, bhi kehte hai, he was the successor of Barber. He wrote a poem, likhi thi, Wallace. बहुत सिंपल सी पोयम है और उसका जो प्रिंसिपल है वो पेट्रियोटिज्म बेस्ड है जैसे इनका द ब्रूस था ठीक है एंड इट रीकाउंट्स द एक्सप्लॉइट्स ऑफ अर्लियर ब्रेव नेशनल हीरोज राइट पेट्रियोटिज्म पे बेस्ड है और ये किस बारे में बताती है कि जो एक्सप्लॉइट्स होते थे ऑन अर्लियर नेशनल हीरोज पे उनके बारे में uh, ye puri poem hai. Achha, uh, students, don't forget that Bruce John Barber is a very freedom lines. This is a very famous lines and this is a John Barber. Jane jate hai. Our freedom is a noble thing, freedom is man to half liking, freedom all solace. 
सो दीज आर द लाइन्स जिनके लिए जॉन बाबर फेमस है सो so, अगर इस स्लाइड में देखें तो इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट्स क्या थे कि जॉन बाबर ने क्या लिखी आ, कौन सी पोएम लिखी थी द ब्रूस एक ये एंथ्यूजियास्टिक पोएम है ऑक्टोसिलेबिक लाइंस हैं और ये रॉबर्ट ब्रूस के बारे में है एडवेंचर्स ऑफ रॉबर्ट ब्रूस के बारे में है सेकेंडली इनका जो मोटिव है पोएम का वो पार्शली हिस्टोरिकल है और पार्शली पेट्रियोटिक है इनके सक्सेसर हेनरी जिन्होंने वॉलेस लिखी है उनकी पोएम भी पेट्रियाटिज्म बेस्ड है और हेनरी को हम ब्लाइंड हेनरी भी कहते हैं और जॉन बार्बर इन लाइंस के लिए फेमस है फ्रीडम लाइंस के लिए फेमस है वो मैंने आपको साइड में दे दिया है ओके नाउ मूविंग ऑन टू रॉबर्ट हेनरी सो टॉकिंग अबाउट रॉबर्ट हेनरीसन He is known for his poem, The Testament of Cressida. This is a famous poem for which Robert Henryson is famous. Now, if you see the name Cressida, we can remember anything? Yes. Um, uh, let's remember. Yes, it was there in Troilus and Cressida, written by Chaucer. So, this is the sequel of the poem Troilus and Cressida. because henry san doesn't like the ending to what chaucer represents in troilus and cressida he wrote the testament of cressida so what chaucer uh, had done in the end that was troilus was killed and cressida lived happily so henry san thought to change the ending and punish faithless cressida so he has written this poem now what this poem is all about now poem is written in rhyme royal stanza please remember it this is important now according to henryson first of all in the very first point he tells that troilus is not dead and in his testament of cressida there is diomede whom uh, here cressida marries but if we see that diomede he is tired of cressida and so one day he leaves her in a forest and he goes away then cressida turns into a prostitute later she was afflicted by uh, a disease called leprosy then she start begging uh, with lepers one day troilus was passing by her way and he gave her some elms then neither of them uh, couldn't recognize each other na hi troilus pehchana na hi cressida pehchani but when cressida thought ki acha this was troilus then uh, she was in a uh, guilt and she there uh, there only she faints and uh, she is in a condition to die but before she dies she leaves a testament that is her will now she doesn't have uh, have had anything uh, but she had a ring jo ki wo troilus ke liye chhod jati hai aur baki jo uska begging bowl tha wo leapers ko de deti hai and she lets her body to the worms and she dies then uh, when troilus later got that ring and uh, Cressida's story was told to Troilus uh, he was in grief and then he raises a marble monument over her grave so the story agar hum dekhe Cressida ki jo ending hai wo bahut hi miserable end tha she was an object of poverty in the later part uh, in the testament of Cressida and she had a miserable end so this is what henryson changed in his poem now moving to the other poems of robert henryson that is he also wrote a classical legend orpheus and eurydice orpheus he is a musician and he goes to hades there is a place hades to bring back his wife eurydice this is a very simple poem and that that is why it is called a classical legend now there was also a story the wolf and the lamb uh, 
जिसमें लैम्प यहाँ पे प्रेजेंट कर रहा है पुअर पीपल को और वुल्फ सिग्निफाई कर रहा है रिच पीपल को यहाँ पे पुअर्स के साथ जो एक्सप्लाइटेशन होता है जो इल ट्रीटमेंट होता है उसको इस स्टोरी में रिप्रेजेंट किया गया है ना वन थिंग दर आई फॉर गॉड बट आई गिवन अ नोट ओवर हेयर दैट देर वॉज जेम्स वन and he had a greater influence of chaucer and that is shown in his work that is king coir all right now this is which it gives a graceful account of his love affair so this is a simple poem james one ko yaad rakhna jo unhone chaucer ke influence mein likhi thi king coir aur ye kis cheez ka kaun dete hain about his love affair so friends here i in my ppt and we are left with uh, two more authors that will be doing in our next ppt that is william dunbar and guan douglas so do not worry we are taking part by part so that you can learn it easily so please follow these classes each and every part is given slowly slowly we'll complete all our syllabus thank you